Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be summing an infinite series with factorials. We have 4 plus 9 over 2 factorial plus 16 over 3 factorial plus 25 over 4 factorial plus so on and so forth all the way to infinity. So what are these numbers? The numerators are 4, 9, 16, 25, so on and so forth. Those are perfect squares. And the denominators are factorials, but the original numbers differ by 1, which means you take 3 squared and divide it by 2 factorial. You take 4 squared and divide it by 3 factorial. It's not 4 squared divided by 4 factorial. Instead, it's 4 squared divided by 3 factorial. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Now, we're going to go ahead and find this infinite sum. First of all, let me tell you that this converges. I'm not going to go into the proof, but indirectly, we're going to prove. We're going to be using some well-known sums. But before we get into that, I'm going to write this using the sigma notation because the sigma notation is super duper helpful. How do you write this with sigma notation? First, you draw the symbol or the letter sigma. It's the uppercase sigma in Greece, Greek, I mean. And I'm going to use n equals 1 to infinity. Now, notice that the first term is 2 squared divided by 1 factorial. But 1 factorial is 1, so you don't necessarily see it. So it's going to be 1 to infinity n plus 1 squared, because notice that for the first term, 2 is squared. For the second term, 3 is squared. And the, four, the third one, 4 is squared. You get that? And that is divided by n factorial. So that is the most critical part. If you can get this right, hopefully the rest will, will be okay. Let's take a look. How do you simplify this? So I'm going to go ahead and focus on this first. Square n plus 1, n squared plus 2n plus 1, and you're going to divide it by n factorial. Let's go ahead and split it up into three pieces. Each piece will be dealt with separately. Okay, first one, n squared divided by n factorial. Second, 2n divided by n factorial. The third one, 1 over n factorial. By the way, the third one is the easiest, but don't worry. We're all going to simplify this. Next, n squared, we're going to write it as n times n. n factorial can be written as n times n minus 1 factorial using properties of factorials. 2n divided by n times n minus 1 factorial again and plus 1 over n factorial. That doesn't really need anything. Now, notice that you can factor out or cancel out or whatever, cross cancel n n, 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 okay? And you get something like this, n over n minus 1 factorial. Oops, that kind of looks like n. Uh, they're not supposed to be connected. 2 over n minus 1 factorial, and 1 over n factorial. Now, we're going to get into the sum of each of these, but before that, I want to do something else. What is that? It is expanding this one more time, but it's not factorial. I'm just going to write it as n minus 1 plus 1 so that I can simplify with the denominator. Make sense? Everything else is the same. Notice that this also gives us a common denominator, but you want to do this first. Separate these things. So let's go ahead and do that first. I'm going to separate it like that, and then the, the other piece will come from the rest. So first we're going to have n minus 1 over n minus 1 factorial, which I can simplify again, and then plus 1 over n minus 1 factorial. Why can't I just leave them disconnected? Plus 2 over n minus 1 factorial, plus 1 over n factorial. So we have like four pieces so far. Isn't that crazy? Now, don't worry about it too much because we're going to combine these two things because they have a common denominator. So we're going to have n minus 1 over n minus 1 factorial plus 3 over n minus 1 factorial plus 1 over n factorial. 
Now, how do you deal with n minus 1 divided by n minus 1 factorial? I could probably go ahead and do this. And you got to remember, n goes 1 to infinity. So if you go ahead and expand this like once, you're going to run into a problem. You know what that is? This is problematic because n starts with 1. This gives you negative 1 factorial, which doesn't even exist, right? Think about the gamma function. It doesn't accept negative integers, does it? So this is very problematic. How do you avoid that problem? This is a huge problem. Houston, this time we have a problem. So here's how we can do it. You can go ahead and expand this. N equals 1 to infinity. N minus 1 over N minus 1 factorial. And then you can just find the value for N equals 1. If N is equal to 1, this is going to be 0 over 0 factorial, which is 0 because it's 0 divided by 1. Be careful, this is 1. Plus, now you can start your index at 2, which is not problematic when we simplify. You get the idea? So we split one term, which is 0. Don't even worry about it, but we have to split it up. And now the rest is good. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Now, we can go ahead and simplify this. Because... The index starts at 2. We already eliminated n equals 1. And now this is all good. So we got n equals 2 to infinity, 1 over n minus 2 factorial. You've got to be very careful about these sums. So this is what we have so far. We have n equals 2 to infinity, 1 over n minus 2 factorial, plus, plus if you remember, we had a 3, right? 1 to infinity, 3 over n minus 1 factorial. Again, that's cool. Plus n equals 1 to infinity, 1 over n factorial. What are these? Okay, you got to know this sum. Let me talk about this real quick. If you have x to the power n divided by n factorial, and n starts at 0 to infinity, this is like 0, x to the power 0 over 0 factorial, so like 1. And then if n is equal to 1, you're going to get x. And then you'll get x squared over 2 factorial. And then x cubed over 3 factorial, so on and so forth. But if you replace... Okay, what is that equal to, right? That's a good question. Okay, this is equal to e to the power x. That's the Taylor series for e to the power x. If x is 1, then you get n equals 0 to infinity... 1 over n factorial equals e. You get the idea? Okay, now, this is what we're going to use for our expression. Notice that it starts with 0. Here, if n is 2, this gives us 0 factorial. So this part, let me erase, clean up this area so I can write. This part is e. It's the same as that one. But this one, with n equals 1... Again, it starts with 0 factorial, so it's 3 times e, which is 3e. But this one starts at 1, so it's missing the 0, which means it's e minus 1. You get the idea? We're missing the first term. That's why we have to subtract it. So what is that equal to? The sum is equal to 5e minus 1. If you add everything else, 4 plus 9 over 2 factorial plus 16 over 3 factorial, plus 25 over 4 factorial, dot, 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 equals 5e minus 1. Now let's go ahead and take a look at Wolfram Alpha. Do you think Wolfram Alpha can evaluate the sum if I give it the left-hand side? What do you think? Ready? Ta-da! Yes, Wolfram Alpha can interpret this correctly. Good job, Wolfram Alpha. You found the answer. And numerically, it's about 12.591. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.